Chapter 8 How to Get the Results You Want The principal reasons for failure are lack of confidence and too much effort. Many people block answers to their prayers by failing to fully comprehend the workings of their subconscious mind. When you know how your mind functions, you gain a measure of confidence. You must remember, whenever your subconscious mind accepts an idea, it immediately begins to execute it. It uses all its mighty resources to that end and mobilizes all the mental and spiritual laws of your deeper mind. This law is true for good or bad ideas. Consequently, if you use it negatively, it brings trouble, failure, and confusion. When you use it constructively, it brings guidance, freedom, and peace of mind. The right answer is inevitable when your thoughts are positive, constructive, and loving. From this, it is perfectly obvious that the only thing you have to do in order to overcome failure is to get your subconscious to accept your idea or request by feeling its reality now, and the law of your mind will do the rest. Turn over your request with faith and confidence, and your subconscious will take over and answer for you. You will always fail to get results by trying to use mental coercion. Your subconscious mind does not respond to coercion. It responds to your faith or conscious mind acceptance. Your failure to get results may also arise from such statements as, things are getting worse, I will never get an answer, I see no way out, it is hopeless, I don't know what to do, I'm all mixed up. When you use such statements, you get no response or cooperation from your subconscious mind. Like a soldier marking time, you neither go forward nor backward. In other words, you don't get anywhere. If you get into a taxi and give half dozen different directions to the driver in five minutes, he would become hopelessly confused and probably would refuse to take you anywhere. It is the same when working with your subconscious mind. There must be a clear-cut idea in your mind. You must arrive at the definite decision that there is a way out, a solution to the vexing problem in sickness. Only the infinite intelligence within your subconscious knows the answer. When you come to that clear-cut conclusion in your conscious mind, your mind is then made up, and according to your belief, is it done unto you. Easy does it. A house owner once remonstrated with a furnace repairman for charging $200 for fixing the boiler. The mechanic said, I charged $0.05 cents for the missing bolt and $199.95 for knowing what was wrong. Similarly, your subconscious mind is the master mechanic, the all-wise one who knows ways and means of healing any organ of your body as well as your affairs. Decree health and your subconscious will establish it, but relaxation is the key. Easy does it. Do not be concerned with details and means, but know the end result. Get the feel of the happy solution to your problem, whether it is health, finances, or employment. Remember how you felt after you had recovered from a severe state of illness? Bear in mind that your feeling is the touchstone of all subconscious demonstration. Your new idea must be felt subjectively in a finished state, not the future, but as coming about now. Infer no opponent. Use imagination and not willpower. In using your subconscious mind, you infer no opponent. You use no willpower. You imagine the end and the freedom state. You will find your intellect trying to get in the way, but persist in maintaining a simple, childlike, miracle-making faith. Picture yourself without the ailment or problem. Imagine the emotional accompaniment of the freedom state you crave. Cut out all red tape from the process. The simple way is the best. How Disciplined Imagination Works Wonders A wonderful way to get a response from your subconscious mind is through disciplined or scientific imagination. As previously pointed out, your subconscious mind is the builder of the body and controls all its vital functions. The Bible says, Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. To believe is to accept something as true, or to live in the state of being it. As you sustain this mood, you shall experience the joy of the answered prayer. The Three Steps to Success in Prayer The usual procedure is as follows. One, Take a look at the problem. 2. Turn to the solution or way out known only to the subconscious mind. 3. Rest in a sense of deep conviction that it is done. Do not weaken your prayer by saying, I wish I might be healed. I hope so. 
Your feeling about the work to be done is the boss. Harmony is yours. Know that health is yours. Become intelligent by becoming a vehicle for the infinite healing power of the subconscious mind. Pass on the idea of health to your subconscious mind to the point of conviction, then relax. Get yourself off your hands. Say to the condition and circumstance, this too shall pass. Through relaxation, you impress your subconscious mind, enabling the kinetic energy behind the idea to take over and bring it into concrete realization. The law of reversed effort and why you get the opposite of what you pray for. Ku, the famous psychologist from France who visited America about 40 years ago, defined the law of reversed effort as follows. When your desires and imagination are in conflict, your imagination invariably gains the day. If, for example, you were asked to walk a plank on the floor, you would do so without question. Now suppose the same plank were placed 20 feet up in the air between two walls, would you walk it? Your desire to walk it would be counteracted by your imagination or fear of falling. Your dominant idea, which would be the picture of falling, would conquer. Your desire, will, or effort to walk on the plank would be reversed, and the dominant idea of failure would be reinforced. Mental effort is invariably self-defeated, eventuating always in the opposite of what is desired. The suggestions of powerlessness to overcome the condition dominate the mind. Your subconscious is always controlled by the dominant idea. Your subconscious will accept the stronger of two contradictory propositions. The effortless way is the better. If you say, I want a healing, but I can't get it, I try so hard, I force myself to pray, I use all the willpower I have, you must realize that your error lies in your effort. Never try to compel the subconscious mind to accept your idea by exercising willpower. Such attempts are doomed to failure, and you get the opposite of what you prayed for. The following is a rather common experience. Students, when taking examinations and reading through their papers, find that all their knowledge has suddenly deserted them. Their minds become appalling blanks, and they are unable to recall one relevant thought. The more they grit their teeth and summon the powers of the will, the further the answers seem to flee. But when they have left the examination room and the mental pressure relaxes, the answers they were seeking float tantalizingly back into their minds. Trying to force themselves to remember was the cause of their failure. This is an example of the law of reversed effort, whereby you get the opposite of what you asked or prayed for. The conflict of desire and imagination must be reconciled. To use mental force is to presuppose that there is opposition. When your mind is concentrated on the means to overcome a problem, it is no longer concerned with the obstacle. The harmonious union or agreement between your conscious and subconscious on any idea, desire, or mental image. When there is no longer any quarrel in either part of your mind, your prayer will be answered. The two agreeing may also be represented as you and your desire, your thought and feeling your idea and emotion, your desire and imagination. You avoid all conflict between your desires and imagination by entering into a drowsy, sleepy state which brings all effort to a minimum. The conscious mind is submerged to a great extent when in a sleepy state. The best time to impregnate your subconscious is prior to sleep. The reason for this is that the highest degree of outcropping of the subconscious occurs prior to sleep and just after we awaken. In this state, the negative thoughts and imagery which tend to neutralize your desire and so prevent acceptance by your subconscious mind no longer present themselves. When you imagine the reality of the fulfilled desire and feel the thrill of accomplishment, your subconscious brings about the realization of your desire. A great many people solve all their dilemmas and problems by the play of their controlled, directed, and disciplined imagination, knowing that whatever they imagine and feel as true will and must come to pass. The following will clearly illustrate how a young girl overcame the conflict between her desire and her imagination. She desired a harmonious solution to her legal problem, yet her mental imagery was constantly on failure loss, bankruptcy, and poverty. It was a complicated lawsuit and there was one postponement after another with no solution in sight. 
At my suggestion, she got into a sleepy, drowsy state each night prior to sleep, and she began to imagine the happy ending, feeling it to the best of her ability. She knew that the image in her mind had to agree with her heart's desire. Prior to sleep, she began to dramatize as vividly as possible, her lawyer having an animated discussion with her regarding the outcome. She would ask him questions, and he would answer her appropriately. He would say to her over and over again, there has been a perfect, harmonious solution. The case has been settled out of court. During the day when fear thoughts came into her mind, she would run her mental movie with gestures, voice, and sound equipment. She could easily imagine the sound of his voice, smile, and mannerism. She ran this mental picture so often it became a subjective pattern, a regular train track. At the end of a few weeks, her attorney called her and confirmed objectively what she had been imagining and feeling as true subjectively. This is really what the psalmist meant when he wrote, Let the words of my mouth, your thoughts, mental images, good, and the meditations of my heart, your feeling, nature, emotion, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, the law of your subconscious mind, my strength and my Redeemer, the power and wisdom of your subconscious mind, can redeem you from sickness, bondage, and misery. Psalm 1914